So this is a selection of bonding questions. They're all multiple choice past paper from AQA A-level chemistry. My suggestion is that you have a go at the question once you've tried it, go through the working out and see if you've got to the right answer. So let's start with number one. And in this particular question, we're dealing with ammonium chloride. We want to know what type of bonding is present within it. So let's first of all consider ammonia. Now you will have drawn the dot cross diagram for ammonia way back in GCSE. So we know that ammonia has covalent bonding. That means we can disregard D. The answer is definitely A, B or C. But if we're making an ammonium iron, we also need to consider that there is dative covalent bonding present because we have got the NH bond on the right hand side in this diagram, both of the electrons are being provided by the nitrogen in the ammonia. So we've now disregarded A, we know the answer is B or C. Now ammonium chloride, there's already a big giveaway here that the NH4 is plus one, so the chloride is minus one. For that reason, within ammonium chloride, we are seeing evidence of covalent, dative covalent and ionic bonding. Okay, so on this we're looking for the correct bonding and correct bond polarity in a molecule of oxygen difluoride, OF2. Not necessarily um, something that you're familiar with, but <clears throat> you can certainly apply your knowledge from the work you've done on bonding. So first of all, we can go through and identify where the bond polarities are correct. We know that fluorine is the most electronegative element. So we know it's more electronegative than oxygen. And for that reason, we know that the Fs are delta negative and the oxygen is therefore delta plus. We're then thinking about the bonding types that exist in here. And they are not coordinate bonds. When we have the O forming the two covalent bonds, uh, one with each F, they are just covalent bonds. They are not coordinate. So the correct answer is A. So for this one, we want to know um, which has a bond angle of, you'll notice it says here, exactly 90 degrees. Now I'm going to race through the first three wrong answers a little. They're all tetrahedral. Methane is one that you should be very familiar with. It's the, it's the first example of a tetrahedral structure you possibly ever drew. NH4 plus is a really common example of tetrahedral. ALCL4 minus, well we know that ALCL3 is trigonal planar. If we add a bond and that bond is a normal covalent bond, we've got the extra electron on the AL, that's why it's ALCL4 minus, we know also that that is going to be tetrahedral. But let's take a look at ClF4 minus in a little more detail. There are four bonding pairs and two lone pairs. I've highlighted the extra electron on the chlorine that comes from the ClF4 minus. Now, as I said, there are four bonding pairs and two lone pairs. That means six pairs of electrons in total. That means it's based on octahedral. Now, you might then be looking at that and thinking, but there are two lone pairs. Surely the bond angle will go down by five degrees. No, in this particular situation where we have two lone pairs on a based on octahedral shape, they will align themselves directly opposite each other. So they cancel each other out and the bond angle remains 90. Okay, so on this one, we're thinking about where there is not a permanent dipole and <clears throat> With all of them, we know that a CH bond, we are looking at van der Waals forces only. But with all of the others, we, we might be thinking there's a big difference in electronegativity between a C and a CL and a C and an F. However, what we're looking for on this particular question is the symmetry. That if I've got four Fs and they're all pulling equally in different directions, 
all equidistant from each other, all same bond angles from each other, then actually the impact of that is that they all cancel each other out. So we don't end up with any dipole. We then look at the examples that we have on here, bromomethane, dibromomethane, tribromo, and tetrabromo, and we want to know which is the least polar. Now, I want you to think really carefully about the last question to see how you can apply it to this one. And what we can see once again is that when we have a C surrounded by four BRs, that those BRs are all equally electronegative. There is an equal difference in electronegativity between the C and the BR in each case. Each of those cancel each other out, so we end up with no permanent dipoles. So we're now thinking about intermolecular forces, the different types of intermolecular forces, and where we might find them. These are all hydrogen halides. Um, <clears throat> The big difference that we're looking at, though, is HCl, HBr, and HI are all dipole-dipole, or permanent dipole-permanent dipole. Whereas in HF, we have hydrogen bonding. We know that that is the strongest intermolecular force, and therefore, we know that A is the correct answer. This is a relatively straightforward question checking whether you understand the trend in electronegativity across a period. And hopefully what you remember is that that is an increase. There is an increase in electronegativity across a period because there is an increased nuclear charge, but there is no increase in shielding. However, there is an error on this graph because argon does not have an electronegativity value. That's because electronegativity is the power of an atom to withdraw electron density towards itself from a covalent bond, and argon doesn't form covalent bonds. So for that reason, the correct answer is actually chlorine. Third variation on a very similar question here. Um, which of these have permanent dipole-dipole attractions between molecules? Well, I'm going to lay this out in a slightly different way. There is symmetry in the CCL4. Each of the CLs is pulling equally on the electrons, so they cancel out. But the same is true in tetrafluoroethene 2. And the same is true in CO2. However, when we look at answer C, we can see there is a delta negative oxygen and a delta positive carbon. So for that reason, the correct answer is C, propanone. We have another very similar question here, and I know the answers are already on, but I'm hoping by this point it's all making a great deal of sense to you. So which has the largest dipole? Well, CF4, SF6, BF3. What you are looking at on here is that all of them is a central atom surrounded by bonds to the same, very electronegative fluorine, but they all cancel out because they have symmetry. CLF3 does not have that. There's actually a lone pair on the chlorine. And you can draw out the dot cross diagrams there so you can see that more clearly if there's anything that you are not 100% confident with. Okay, so we want to know which of these has three lone pairs of electrons around the central atom. My advice is to draw them all out. It takes a little bit of time. You can sketch them. You're not going to be uh, marked on the quality of what you draw, but you can get the idea much more visually and much more clearly. So if I take a look at A, B, F, 2 minus, it looks like this. I have got one lone pair. That's not the answer. For B, 
I've got two lone pairs. You'll also notice I've added one of the electrons in each case on in red. That has come from the negative charge on the complex ion. It's negative because of that electron that has been gained. If I move on to C, ClF2 minus, you can see there that has got three lone pairs around the chlorine. So the correct answer is C. You can go ahead and draw out D to confirm it. Actually, when you've got six things around a central atom, it's very unlikely you'll have any lone pairs at all. So you might be able to just disregard that. And finishing off with this question asking about the highest boiling temperature. Now, you might want to sketch all of them out. You might just want to think about what the functional groups are, because that's going to get you a fair way through this particular question. In A, I've got an ester linkage, a COOC. In B, I've got an alcohol functional group. I've got the OH on the end. C is an alkane, and I'm hoping you're going to look at that straight away and think, van der Waals, the answer is definitely not C. And D, we have got an aldehyde. So we've got a C double bond O and a CH. Now of all of these, one stands out as having a particular intermolecular force that differs from the others. And that's the OH in B shows that it exhibits hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force. So things with hydrogen bonding will have a higher boiling point, And that's why the correct answer is B.